Welcome to this review session. In this session, we're going to be doing some regression problems, solving them using Microsoft Excel and explaining uh, how to interpret the printout. We'll be looking at several problems over the next few slides. Uh, pay attention, uh, do listen to the audio. Um, I hope you enjoy this lecture. All right, look at this problem. Again, in regression, you have to know which is the X variable, or the independent variable, and which is the Y variable, the dependent variable, the thing you're trying to predict. Well, here, X variable is a math score, giving the possible employees a math, you know, math, actually, these are the current employees, a math test. And then we have their scores. And then we also have them rated on job performance, some zero to tens scale with 10 means you're an incredibly good employee and zero means you're awful. Okay, now the first thing you do when you look at a printout, this printout comes from Excel. Again, we have a handout on how to do this, how to use Excel to get a scatter plot, which you have on the side, and how to get this regression printout. But you're going to have to understand how to read a printout. So the first thing you look at is the significance value. Now, in this case, I look at the significance value. There's an arrow there, and it shows that the probability of getting the sample evidence, given that X and Y are not related, that you shouldn't be using one to predict the other, is 0.765. Now, the rule is, if you're testing at the 05 level, this is not significant. Basically, what the computer, what you're learning from this printout, is that this is not unexpected. You know, if X and Y have nothing to do with each other, the sample evidence supports that. Indeed, look at the scatter plot on the side. There's this chart title. Again, I kind of drew in the, I had the computer draw in the regression line, but it's meaningless because clearly this is just a random pattern. See, your sample evidence is showing a random pattern. X and Y are totally unrelated. It's almost like a circle. You could draw that line anywhere. Computer felt this is the best job for the least square line, but really it's not, there's no good line. Okay, so the first thing you always look at is the significance value. Rule of thumb, if, if the F value is, is, you know, between zero and one, it's never going to be significant. All right, and F of zero is totally not significant. You explain nothing. The X did not explain any of the variation in Y. Okay, so the, right away, when you see this, that's not significant. You don't draw, you don't write out the regression equation, you do nothing. You've got garbage. X and Y are unrelated. So in this case, what you tell your boss, you know, you did a study and notice the 13, uh, you took 13 uh, subjects and you found absolutely no relationship between math scores and job performance. And again, that's confirmed with the R. Look at the correlation coefficient. It's called multiple because this is also used when you have several independent variables. It's really just R. Again, the printout called it multiple R, which is really the correlation coefficient. Notice it's 0 0.09, quite close to zero. In any case, it's not, it's not different from zero. That's what not significant means. As far as you're concerned, you cannot reject HO, which is saying that the row, the population correlation is zero. This is basically no different from zero. There is no relationship between X and Y. You should not be using X to predict Y. You have no connection between these two variables. Okay, now we're looking at another problem. X, okay, X are an independent variable is years of education. How many years of education somebody has? Okay, to be a high school graduate, you need 12 years of education. And we'll look at their hourly wage at this company. You want to see there's some kind of connection between years of education and hourly wage. First thing you look at is the significance of F. And as you can see, it's way below 0.05. Right, it's 0 0.00001, the one in a million, I think. Okay, one, one chance in a million of getting this kind of sample evidence. Now the sample evidence is either that scatter plot or the R, the R value. But basically, the minute you see this significance value, you know that X uh, can be used to predict Y. Now, first of all, let's write out the regression equation. Now you see where it says coefficient? 
and you see the intercept the intercept is the constant that's okay that's the value of y when x is zero so your intercept is negative 17.937 and your slope term is positive it's important to note that it's positive 3.349 so the way you write out the write out the regression equation y hat equals minus 17.937 plus 3.349x x is years of education so suppose i ask you to predict i say let's say x is is uh, 16 so plug 16 into the equation 3.349 times 16 minus 17.937 and now you've predicted the y hat which is hourly wage and that's your predicted hourly wage that's from the line okay, that would be the regression line now, other things of interest you can tell your boss well the correlation coefficient r is a positive 0.868 very strong correlation you can use the word strong on a 0.86 besides being significant which means not zero you can say it's strong 0.868 the r squared now that's the proportion of the variation in y which is hourly wage explained by years of education well it's 75.4 percent did a lot of explaining let's just call it 75 percent it means only 25 percent is left unexplained we explained approximately 75 percent unexplained is 25 percent now that could be random factors on you may have other factors education may not be the only factor but education did a very good job in explaining the variation in the y the hourly wage the adjusted has a mathematical thing about degrees of ignore it as with degrees of freedom we'll work with the regular r squared and r squared is just r the correlation coefficient of squared which has a lot of meaning in regression the standard error we're not going to use too much it's used for for all kinds of inferences that we're not going to do in this course. Observations, you know, there were 20 observations, you can count it. There are 20 points, right? Because you're looking at essentially at 20 people, you're looking at the years of education and hourly wage. The only thing you have to realize is step one, look at the significance value. If it's significant, I can write out the regression equation. You write it out, and I told you what it was y hat equals minus 17.937 plus 3.349 x you can use that for predictions i showed you how to do that you explain what r is to your boss it's a it's a measure of association it's 0 0.8 a plus 0.868 your r squared another important measure you tell your boss boy education explained approximately 75 percent of the variation in wage only 25 percent left unexplained and now you know how to read a print out. Okay, let's look at this problem. X, the independent variable is age, the dependent variable Y is task completion time in minutes. Okay, so you have the X and the Y. First thing, is the you decide, is the regression significant? Is an arrow pointing at the significance of F? And it's 0 0.00001. Definitely, definitely significant. Definitely less than 05. That's one in 100,000, I think. One chance in 100,000 of getting the sample evidence, of getting this kind of sample evidence if X and Y are unrelated. This is not what you expect to see. And again, the scatter plot would confirm that. What is the value of the intercept term? B0? Well, you can see it on the bottom, 11.525, that's the intercept coefficient. So B0 is 11.525. What is the slope term? B1, 1.032, right? You want to write out the regression equation now based on that? Y hat equals 11.525 plus 1.032x. Notice the positive slope, which means the correlation is also going to be positive. What is the correlation coefficient? Plus 0.868. The correlation coefficient always has the same sign as the slope. There's a positive relationship between age and how long it takes to do the task. The older you get, 
the longer it takes to do the task. What is the proportion of the variation in y? Y is task completion time. It's explained by x. How much does it explain? How much does age explain? Well, you can see from the r squared value, 75.3%. Okay, 75.3. Let's round it to 75% approximately. Again, 25% is left unexplained. Other variables, perhaps? But uh, if 25% is unexplained, 75% is explained. So again, you tell your boss, I found a significant relationship between age and task completion time. And notice what happens. Every year you get older, it takes another minute to complete the task, 1.032 minutes to be exact. That's the slope, the change in Y, the change in task completion time, over age. Every year means another 1.03 minutes to complete this task. If you ask to predict, let's say somebody is 50, how long would it take based on your regression model? Plug 50 into the equation. 50 times 1.032 plus the intercept plus 11.525 and you'll get your answer. Okay, let's look at this regression now. Age is X, the independent variable. The dependent variable is job satisfaction score. Are they related? Question one, is there a relationship here, significant? Answer is, look at the significance value of F, 0 0.0004. That's a lot less than 0 0.05. So we're testing at the 0 0.05 level. Yes, it's significant, highly significant. In fact, there's 10, 100, 10, four chances in 10,000 of getting this kind of sample evidence. That's the scatter plot of the R of getting this if nothing is going on. In other words, it's not what you expect to see. Okay, so we have a significant regression. There's a relationship between age and job satisfaction. What's the value of the constant, B0? 109.27. Okay, we round it a little bit. What is the value of the slope term? Now, this is important. It's negative 1.0448. There's a, a negative relationship. So that means that the slope uh, is negative, so the correlation coefficient is negative. Let's write out the regression equation. Okay, y hat is 109.27 minus 1.045, we just rounded, minus 1.045, rounded, okay, x. Okay, what's the correlation coefficient? Now, this is a, a trick question. It doesn't show the negative, but Excel, that's a mistake Excel makes, or whatever. You're supposed to figure out that R is minus 0.792. Minus 0.792. It's a negative relationship. As people get older in this company, their job satisfaction goes down. Okay? In fact, I can tell you how much it goes down. For every year they get older, their job satisfaction goes down by minus 1.045 points. A little more than a point every year on a 100-point scale. Okay, what is the proportion of the variation in job satisfaction, the Y, explained by age? Well, that the R squared tells you it's 62.7%, 0.627. We explained almost, not quite, 63%, which means almost 37% has been left unexplained. So you might want to use another variable, and that would be called multiple regression, but not in this course. Okay? Okay, let's look at this problem. We're looking at absences from class and the score on the stat final. And as you can see, there were 17 observations. So we're looking at 17 points, 17 people. Okay, and I can get the scatter plot. You know how to do that. All right, first thing, is the regression significant? Well, look at the value there, 0 0.0030. And three chances in the thousand of getting this kind of um, sample evidence, a lot less than 5%, 0 0.003 is less than 5%, it is significant. We have a significant regression, okay? So there's a relationship between absences, which we're gonna use to predict score on the stat final. So first it's significant. Okay, question two, what is the value of B0, B1? Well, the, uh, the intercept term, the constant is 88 point, we're rounding now, 88.75, that's the constant term. The slope term again is negative, minus 4.40. So we write out the equation. 
Y hat, which represents the score on the stat final, is 88.75 minus 4.40 times X. Okay, if you want to predict the score for somebody who mix, who misses class eight times, plug eight into the equation, 88.75 minus 440 times eight, and your prediction is they get a 53.55 on the exam. Okay? Just make sure, again, you know the slope is negative. A negative slope, so what happens to your correlation coefficient? It's going to be negative 0.6741. Again, the correlation coefficient and the slope have the same sign. There's an inverse relationship between absences and the score on the stat final. So again, make sure you know that R is a negative 0.674. Okay, what is the proportion of the variation of y that is explained by x? Well, x did a good job. It's pretty good, but not perfect. For, explain 45.4%. I'll be more exact, 45.44%. A bit more than 45% was explained, which means close to 55 was unexplained. You might need some more variables to explain. Now, one other question. Look at the intercept. I forgot to mention this. Okay, what is that? That's the value of y when x is zero. So what is the value of y when x is zero? x is zero means no absences. If you never miss class, according to the predicted model here, your grade should be 88.75. Again, that intercept, the constant term, is the value of y, in this case, score on stat final, when x is zero and there's zero absences. So we'd be predicting 88.75. Every absence makes you lose four point four points on your stat final. Okay, let's look at this problem. You're looking at attractiveness on a 10 point scale, 10 means you're very, very good looking. Okay, that's attractiveness. And we want to look see if it's related to wage. This could be some kind of discrimination if there is a relationship. So the company wants to know, is there a relationship? Are people who are more attractive getting higher wages? In any case, they want to know, is there a relationship? And what is your conclusion? Look at that significance of F. 0.283 again it's not significant that's a lot more than five percent so the pattern you're looking at could very well be explained by chance and the correlation coefficient even though technically it's r is 0.268 it's not different from zero you would say it's not significant which means you're not you know it's not different than zero you don't have evidence that it's different from zero and with the same with the R squared. Look at the R squared, 0 0.072. You really haven't explained much, but it's, you haven't explained more than zero as for mathematically, statistically. Again, really, when you take one look at this, you just tell your boss, no relationship between attractiveness and wage. There's no relationship, period. Don't use one to predict the other. They're not related. Remember, as always, the best way to study for a, an exam in this statistics course is to do as many problems as possible, and that includes problems which you solve using Microsoft Excel.